We got an epic cinematic trailer and a gameplay showcase for Ubisoft's new open world single player game Star Wars Outlaws. I actually got to see a presentation after Ubisoft Forward with some extra information on the game as well, so a ton to go over, but let's cover the basics first. To set the general tone for the game, you'll be playing as a brand new character called Kay Vess, voiced by Humberly Gonzalez, who you might remember as Honron if you've played Far Cry 6. Kay is trying to make a living in the galaxy at the height of the Empire's Power as the story takes place between the Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, which explains that shot of Han Solo frozen in carbonite that we saw in the reveal trailer. Kay eventually finds herself on the galaxy's most wanted list after a job goes wrong and the only way to get the bounty off her head is to pull off one of the biggest heists the galaxy has ever seen. I'm guessing this job opportunity is presented to her by Jalen, another new character who we see a brief glimpse of in the cinematic trailer as he says he's offering Kay a way out. To round out the crew we have the BX commando droid ND5 or Andy for friends who looks like a badass with a trench coat but actually seems like a pretty civil droid in conversations. Always good to have someone in the crew to keep a level head when things go sideways. But the companion that immediately drew everyone's eye is of course the adorable Nyx. He's a Merkel, a previously unseen species in the Star Wars universe and next to being the cutest he's also an incredibly useful asset in gameplay. We'll get to that in a bit though as first I want to talk about the open world features of Star Wars Outlaws. Because that is what makes this game unique. It's a truly open world style game in the Star Wars universe. I should actually say worlds because there will be multiple planets that we get to explore over the course of the game. In the gameplay demo we get to see the new planet Toshara that was created by Massive. The gameplay is centered around the Jonta's Hope outpost but there will actually be a larger scale city on this planet as well. We end the gameplay demo in orbit of the planet Akiva which the press release notes as a humid jungle planet. Next to that, keen-eyed fans will also have spotted two familiar locations that we've already seen before in the movies. There's Kijimi, which was featured in The Rise of Skywalker, where we can see Kay traversing the very cold city streets. And of course, as an outlaw, we couldn't stay away from the hive of scum and villainy that is Tatooine. We've already seen Jabba in the cinematic trailer, so I wonder if a face-to-face -face meeting is in the cards. Let's just hope we don't become rancor food though. We'll be visiting all these different planets with our very very own spaceship, the Trailblazer. It of course has access to a hyperdrive which brings up a menu of available planets to jump to. After a quick charge, the Trailblazer will enter light speed and you'll pop up at your destination of choice. But space can be a dangerous place as well, especially if you're wanted by the Empire, so the ship has a variety of armaments to shoot down some TIE fighters. There are of course the lasers we can see in the demo to take down enemy ships, but the HUD also shows we have missiles and what looks to be an in-flight repair system. Their ship shields and health and one last icon I can't quite make out that's either the ship's laser cannons or some sort of turret. And the trailblazer is pretty maneuverable too as we can see it perform a sort of corkscrew dodge when the Empire brings in more fighters. You'll be able to partake in smaller dogfights and large scale space battles presumably like the one we see in the cinematic trailer. In the presentation I got to see the developers even mentioned that space will have its own secret so there will be rewards for exploration as well. The one thing I am still unsure about is if we can fly the Trailblazer planet side because the current gameplay suggests to me that this won't be the case. But even if that is true, Kay will have her trusty speeder to traverse the more open spaces of the planet she visits. This thing is heavily inspired by the world of motocross and it was even mentioned that Kay can perform stunts like jumps and drifts as well which will allow her to reach places she can't on foot. The speeder also comes with a boost function and there's even some sort of dead eye ability that lets you slow down time and paint a couple of targets for a barrage of blaster bolts. In the demo, K only has to take down two pursuers, but the HUD suggests that you'll be able to mark up to five targets at a time. A pretty cool way to do vehicle combat if you ask me, as the result looks very cinematic, although I do wonder how much depth there is to it, as it seems kind of simple on the surface. And there is way more to go over, but if you liked the video so far, be sure to leave a like and subscribe as well to not miss out on future Star Wars Outlaws videos. Now, as mentioned, you won't be visiting these planets alone. Your pet companion, Nyx, is always by your side and he plays a pretty big role in gameplay as well. In the demo we see that Kay can command him to attack a target or interact with an object which in this case allows for a stealthy exit past the Pike Syndicate. Even if combat breaks out, Nyx can still make himself useful by grabbing items for Kay like this heavy rifle that makes short work of these Pike soldiers. Nyx can even reach places Kay can't so he's even useful when you're simply out exploring. But Kay herself is a very capable scoundrel too as she can take multiple approaches 
use the complete contract. We see her stealthily take out a pike and while we haven't seen them in action, the press release also mentions an array of gadgets to help you out. If you do get spotted though, something interesting will happen as we can see in the gameplay demo that Kay is trying to talk her way out of the situation before pulling her blaster. I'm curious if this is just a way to buy yourself more time to set up your aim or if you can actually bluff your way out of a combat encounter. Because as I'll get to in a bit, choosing the loud approach here does have consequences. Once all hell breaks loose, Kay can rely on her highly customizable blaster to save her life. We can actually see some of the customization in action as we run into this pike soldier with a massive energy shield. Regular blaster shots don't do much so Kay quickly switches to the focused module to take care of the shield and then clocks the soldier in the face. The post show presentation mentioned Kay's blaster will have a range of modes suited for any enemy so it feels like a safe bet calling this our main weapon with the ability to modify and upgrade it over time. I'm guessing that's what the workbench is for that appears in a button prompt when you're on the ship. Going back to the gameplay from earlier, maybe you also spotted the fact that there is a stun mode which looks like it's on a toggle. So again, this is guesswork, but that makes me believe you have the option to choose between lethal and non-lethal approaches to combat, which will each bring their own consequences and risks. But the blaster definitely isn't your only weapon. Again, Nyx can grab weapons for you like the heavier A300 blaster rifle, although you can't use it after it overheats. The developers also mentioned specifically that Nyx can help K find heavier firepower for a period of time. I'm not sure what to think of this yet, on the one hand having only the blaster might get repetitive, but improvising your way out of a bad situation by using enemy weapons does fit the outlaw fantasy very well. And if all else fails, you can of course also send Nyx directly at an enemy to distract them while you reposition or shoot them in the back. You don't want to be doing this too often though, because like I hinted at earlier, confronting the criminal syndicates in the game will have consequences. After escaping the pike scrap, on her speeder, we see Kay get a call from Andy asking her if she was spotted. She'll reply with yes and after the conversation ends, we can see on the HUD that our reputation with the Pike Syndicate has gone down. So if Kay wouldn't have been spotted, this conversation would have been different and I'm assuming there would be no loss of reputation. While we know next to nothing about how reputation will work, there is a lot of potential to the system. The Pikes are not the only Syndicate in the game as narrative director Navid Kavari confirmed that the HUD cartel is also present, which is why Jabba and Han showed up in that cinematic reveal trailer. There's also a new syndicate called the Ashida clan that we only caught a glimpse of, but these don't look like the kind of people you want to be angry with you. Considering the fact that most of these criminal syndicates don't really play nice with each other, I'm hoping there will be some tough choices that have us increase our reputation with one faction, but decreasing it with another. Next to these factions, you'll also clash with the Empire. While they do have their differences with the criminal syndicates, they're apparently making deals with them too as we can see a pike member in this imperial base. And you can actually cut deals with them too as the gameplay showcase has K choose between bribing an officer or taking the money and being reported. In this example she chooses the latter which shows how the empire differs from the syndicate factions. If you cross the empire you get a wanted status with a meter on the top left showing how bad the stormtroopers want you dead. This meter does not decrease when entering space in the trailblazer and might even be the reason why you're attacked directly after leaving the planet's atmosphere. Either way, a very cool way to showcase the oppressive force of the Empire as getting on their bad side will always be a dangerous thing to do. Now so far I've been very positive about the game and yeah the gameplay showcase especially left me really impressed. I am left with one big question though. What is our incentive to do all of these things? During the presentation the word lucrative was mentioned very often so it seems like credits like the ones we earned from the contract in the demo will be a big incentive for us to take on jobs. Which makes sense for Kay, but what will we as players be doing with this cash? Can we buy new weapons and gadgets, upgrades for our speeder and ship, and what other rewards will we be able to find by simply exploring? Obviously, we'll find out more about that in the future, but I would have liked to have at least some info on that, as these systems are usually very important to Ubisoft's open world games. Ubisoft notes the game's release for 2024 on PS5, Xbox Series, and PC, with it currently even being planned for their current financial year, which means early 2024. Question is, if they will make that, I'd much prefer them to take their time with the game, because if it ends up being as good as it looks, we are in for a real treat. Totally subscribe for everything on Star Wars Outlaws. When there is new info, we will of course let you know. A like on the video would really help me out, and if you want more on Ubisoft Forward, you can watch our video on the Assassin's Creed Mirage announcement by clicking on the screen. I will 
see you in the next one. Goodbye.